Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show how to make a single-sided circuit board. So I've done a couple of videos in the past about this, but I have found um, a slightly easier way to do it, and I thought I would update the, uh, the video. So here's um, kind of the majority of what you'll need for uh, part one. Uh, so you're going to need some uh, pre-sensitized copper clad board. You'll need uh, some sandpaper. Uh, you'll want tweezers. Um, you can use metal ones, but plastic ones are cheap and they're actually better because we're going to use these to reach into the uh, chemicals. Uh, a cheap little acid brush, just as a uh, brush. Um, a way to measure in uh, you know a small unit like ounces or milliliters. Um, for developing, you will need to use sodium hydroxide or lye. And then when you etch the board, um, in the previous video I showed how to use ferric chloride, um, but a, a cheaper way and faster way and easier way is actually to use uh, hydrochloric acid and hydrogen peroxide. And then if you want to tin plate the circuit board, you can use a product like liquid tin, which uh, it will give you a, um, uh, a plating of tin on your copper traces. Um, you'll need something to cut the, uh, the circuit board material. So I use uh, tin snips. And then to measure out uh, the various items, you'll probably want to have a scale. In this first part of a two-part series, I'm going to show how to um, expose a circuit board, develop it, etch it, and then optionally tin plate it. And then in the second video, I'll show how to uh, apply an optional solder mask. And then I will solder together the actual board, and I will test it and demonstrate it. Uh, it's going to be a small uh, microphone amplifier. In case you're wondering, I'll put links in the video description to all these items so that if you need them or if you want to look at pricing, um, just check out the video description. And I forgot to mention, but you will need to obviously print out your uh, circuit board. And I use um, just regular transparencies. Uh, make sure they are suitable for your printer. If you have a laser printer, get ones rated for a laser printer or they will uh, deform from the heat. Um, you will need to use a printer that has at least 1200 dpi. Um, 600 dpi is just not good enough. Um, well, maybe if you're using um, just through hole stuff, but if you're doing surface mount, um, you need at least 1200 dpi. And uh, so here are the two layers that are important in this first part of the video. Uh, that's probably not going to focus. Um, but there is my copper layer, the top layer. And then in the second part of the video, I will do the solder mask, and there is the uh, the mask for uh, for that. See, so yeah, I print those out, and then uh, what we can do is uh, cut the circuit board to shape. So I actually found a uh, collection of uh, same exact part, uh, same exact item, but of uh, cutoffs, and um, I recommend you save them because if you ever want to test out different um, mixing ratios, you know, even your little small pretty much useless cutoffs are really good for that. Um, but I happen to have some cutoffs that are um, just the right size for the circuit board that I want to make. So I'm going to make two of them. So I've got this one that's already cut to shape and I'll cut another one that is uh, pretty similar. So just to roughly mark it and use uh, tin snips to uh, cut the board. So that'll work. Um, so I've got two boards that I'm going to use, and I'll put this aside. Uh, a very important part you do not want to forget is you want to sand the edges of the circuit board. So you take your sandpaper, and basically from whenever you cut it, and even if it's a factory edge, uh, there's going to be burrs. And if you leave those on there, when you lay your mask on top, it will not actually sit flat, and you will get a blurry exposure. So there we have uh, two boards that are ready or pretty much ready to be exposed. Um, what we can do now is mix up the developer. For the developer, you need water and you need sodium hydroxide. A uh, common name for sodium hydroxide in the US is Y. Uh, the uh, chemical symbol or whatever it's called is NaOH. And uh, you only need uh, one and a half grams of sodium hydroxide to about four ounces of water.
Uh, the sodium hydroxide comes in little pellets, as you saw, and so you can just mix them up a little bit to uh, encourage them to dissolve. You can kind of see them down there. And then I'm going to pour it into a different container just because it's easier for me to uh, put the circuit board in here instead of this uh, tall container. We can now go ahead and uh, expose the uh, circuit boards. You'll need a, uh, a way to expose the board. Um, I bought this developing uh, or exposure kit from MG Chemicals. I'll put a link in the uh, description as well. It's, uh, as far as I can tell, just a regular fl uh, fluorescent lamp, um, but it apparently puts out at least some UV, which is good. Uh, and then a just a sheet of uh, probably acrylic. Um, Clear acrylic. So you take your uh, your transparency, and I don't remember if I mentioned it earlier, but you need to print when you print these out. You need to print them mirrored, so um, it probably won't show up too well on camera. But you can see that black is uh, oh there we go. The uh, black toner from my printer is um, kind of a um, a matte or satin uh, sheen, and you actually want the toner to be touching the copper to get the um, sharpest exposure. And, uh, and there you can kind of see that's just the, uh, the transparency, the toner is on the back side. So you want to do that otherwise, um, so it'll look like that. Otherwise, uh, your toner is going to be on the top side and just a little bit of height from the transparency uh, will blur your exposure. So you uh, peel off the uh, protective film. You put the transparency on uh, centered. You put the, um, the sh sheet of plastic on top to kind of weigh it down and keep it flat. And then double check that your plastic is not um, touching like your, your surface cardboard in my case. Um, you don't want the, the plastic to be kind of at an angle. You want it to be sitting flat on the board. And then you can turn on the, um, the, uh, the light. I'm going to switch right there. Uh, you turn on the light and then for this particular lamp and uh, the boards that I'm using, the exposure time is about 2 minutes and 30 seconds. So you peel off the protective layer, uh, try not to touch the green film, uh, and then you can kind of blow it off just in case any um, little uh, bits of that plastic um, settled on it. So now we can just put the board in the developer. And it'll take about two or three minutes. Um, I set up, or I, I um, chose a ratio for my developer to be um, pretty weak, and that's because my uh, printer does not print out a very opaque black. If you have a, um, a printer that can print out a very opaque black, um, you can expose it for a little bit longer and then develop it a little bit quicker using uh, more sodium hydroxide. So right now it's pretty close to being developed. It's not all the way there. There is just a hint left of uh, film in the exposed areas. Um, have your water ready to go because you do want to rinse it off very quickly. Uh, it's easy to overdevelop it, uh, especially when your uh, mask isn't great like mine where the uh, black isn't, you know, very, very opaque. All right, I'm going to call that good enough and uh, rinse it off. All right, so as you saw, I dropped my tweezers in the uh, developer. Uh, not a big deal though. This isn't actually the uh, chemical to worry about. This is a uh, very, very mild. Um, it's the uh, the etchant and the uh, tin plating stuff that you really want to be careful about. And anyway, we can see the green kind of uh, turned out a little bit thinner because I let it develop just a little too long, uh, but it should still be fine. I don't think that'll be any problem. I exposed and developed the second board off uh, camera, and there you can kind of see a close-up shot. And uh, basically what you're checking for on your circuit boards, of course, is that uh, the mask did not get too thin. Uh, otherwise, the etchant will actually dissolve the copper that you don't want to dissolve and look for any scratches on the surface um, 
might have been caused by the brush or a manufacturing defect or anything. Um, if you have a streak where there's no uh, no mask, then you know you'll you'll lose copper there, and that could end up cutting one of your traces. Now we can mix up the etchant. Um, I use a ratio of three parts water to one part uh, hydrochloric acid and one part uh, hydrogen peroxide. A um, couple important things to keep in mind: the uh, hydrogen peroxide or hydrochloric acid that I'm using has a uh, supposedly 31.45% concentration. Uh, right there. And then this is, um, I think the listing actually said 30%, it says 35. Uh, I'm not sure I believe either because both of those are incredibly concentrated. Um, but yeah, so roughly 30% uh, and 30% concentration for, for both chemicals. Um, you can use the grocery store hydrogen peroxide, which is like 2%, maybe 3%, uh, but it will etch very slowly. Um, I think it took me more than 20 minutes to etch a board when I did that. Um, if you go that route, you can just do um, like one part hydrogen peroxide and one part hydrochloric acid because there will be so much water already in your hydrogen peroxide. Um, now with something to do three parts water, one part hydrochloric acid, one part hydrogen peroxide. Uh, the ratio is not critical, just make sure you have uh, water in there because you want to slow down the reaction. Without the water and with these purity levels, uh, it will etch way too fast. And uh, don't forget from uh, high school chemistry, always add acid to water. Don't add water to acid. So I've got uh, roughly three parts water in there. Uh, keep in mind if you use the high purity um, hydrochloric acid that I'm using, it is fuming, so you probably want to do this outside. Uh, but yeah, do whatever you want. All right, so we have our um, mixture. The water uh, will get water, or it will get hotter when you add the hydrochloric acid. It's a exothermic reaction. Uh, it's not too hot, but it'll be noticeably warm. Um, you don't really need to mix it up because it will uh, kind of naturally do that. It doesn't really uh, separate. And I'm, again, I'm gonna pour it into a small container for ease of uh, use. All right, go ahead and take the first board and uh, carefully put it in there. You might want to wear gloves. Uh, I'm not that cautious, but some people are. You can see the chemical reaction starts very quickly. And uh, you don't really need to do much. I just kind of shake it around a little bit and occasionally um, kind of smack the board with tweezers to make sure there's no air bubbles that are causing problems. So it is mostly etched by now. You can see the bubbling has slowed down. You can see some uh, bare fiberglass near the edges of the board. And uh, when it starts to bubble very little, we know that pretty much all of the exposed copper has been dissolved. Okay, so it's pretty much done etching. You can see there's really no more or very little reaction going on. If you leave it in too long, it'll start to under etch. It'll kind of etch away underneath the mask. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull it out and wash it off. All right, so there's the two boards. They have been etched. Um, you just wanna make sure there's no um, like copper that should be gone that is still there. And a very important part is you wanna take like a flashlight and backlight it um, to check if any of the traces were cut. So in video, I'm not sure if this is gonna be clear enough doesn't look like it probably not um, but yeah you want to look to make sure that none of your traces are cut and um, you don't have any leftover copper where there where there shouldn't be copper see those both boards yeah I well okay that might show up clear enough on video um, but yeah you can kind of see um, you can also see there's a, a cut right across there that may have been from my brush or it may have been uh, an issue with the mask, I don't know. 
um, but it's only on this board. Um, but I did look, and it doesn't look like, doesn't look like it's actually cutting any um, traces in half. Um, but we'll find out. So what you can do now is you can stick these both in the uh, mask developer from before to remove that green mask. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and template them because I, I just generally like that. You don't have to. If you want, you could use these boards as is. Um, they're ready to solder, uh, and, and you can go on your way. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and template them, and then in the next video, I'm going to show how to apply a solder mask, and then I'll also show uh, assembling them with the components and testing them, and we'll see how these microphone amplifiers work. Okay, final step for this part one video is to apply a tin plating. So I'm going to use uh, liquid tin from MG Chemicals, and uh, you don't dilute you don't dilute it or anything. You just uh, you know pour it into a tray. So the uh, liquid tin that I have is a, uh, a very old bottle. I think this is probably almost uh, two or three years old by now, and it's pretty worn out. Um, if you use brand new stuff, it will look almost immediate, like before the board even touches the bottom of the bowl, it will be a vibrant silver color. Uh, but as you can see, it took a little bit longer, but that's fine. Um, the data sheet says to leave it in there for, I believe, two or three minutes to let the thickness um, kind of reach its uh, maximum. I'm going to go ahead and leave it in for about five or six because uh, I have an old, an old bottle of liquid tin. All right, it's been about uh, probably seven minutes, and I'm going to go ahead and take them out. Uh, as you can see, they are fully plated. There we go. And that's about as good as they're going to get. So I took them out of the liquid tin, washed them off, dried them off, and there is the end result. Uh, again, the liquid tin is optional, um, so now if you want, you could populate the boards. Uh, but I'm going to go even further and apply a solder mask um, because I hope to use these boards for quite a while and I want them to um, to look decent. So check out the next video for that. And uh, before you go away, check this out. I thought I would show what I learned uh, when I first started to etch with hydrochloric acid and hydrogen peroxide, and that is you really need to dilute it with water uh, if you're using 30% hydro hydrogen peroxide. Um, so like I said earlier, I normally use a three-part water, one-part hydrochloric acid, one-part hydrogen peroxide ratio. In here, we have just equal parts hydrochloric acid, about 32% purity, and hydrogen peroxide, about 30% purity. Piece of copper clad board, same exact board as we were using, but without the green uh, photo mask. It's just a piece of scrap I had laying around. And you'll see just how quickly it'll etch, uh, literally in a matter of seconds. So I'm going to use uh, tweezers. Okay, now that was not sped up. I know that in earlier parts of my video, I was uh, fast forwarding so you guys didn't get bored. This is all, this entire clip is all in real time. So you can see that was literally like two seconds and the copper is gone. Uh, that's one ounce copper, same copper as before. So that is why you need to dilute with water. <laughs> okay, so hope you enjoyed that. Um, that's the end of this video. Um, so in the next video, which I'll upload in a day or two, I'll show how to apply the solder mask. And um, I'll actually solder the board together and then do a demonstration of the microphone amplifier. We'll see how, how good or, uh, or potentially how bad it sounds. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. I hope you liked the video. Uh, if you know anybody that would benefit from it, please share it with them.